I hope everyone is doing well. I am Mr. H. Thank you for joining me for this very interesting video where we are synthesizing this anesthetic sedative propofol. Many people have heard of it. It's used in outpatient procedures as a sedative and or anesthetic propofol. This right here is the representation of it. I have a benzene ring, I have a hydroxyl group, and I have these items sticking out of, from the side. What are they? I'm looking here at a CHCH3 isopropyl groups. It's an isopropyl group, one on this side, one on this side. I have two isopropyl groups in ortho position to the hydroxy. I'm looking here basically at a phenol, which is your hydroxy benzene to which these two isopropyl groups have been added to the ortho position. But the synthesis of this is very easy. It looks intimidating, but it's very easy. You have to keep in mind two important points. One is the moderating aspect. We don't want to moderate the hydroxyl group because the hydroxyl on the benzene is so activating. It can give you multiple items on the benzene, but we do want multiple items because I want two of these to be added fairly easy. So we will not moderate. We don't want to moderate the hydroxyl group by converting into a methoxy benzene, by converting hydroxyl into ether, you make that ortho para direction of this less, you make it weaker, and then you have to do multiple steps. We don't want to moderate, but we certainly want to do a blocking group here. Why do we want to do a blocking procedure? Because I don't want anything to add over here, nothing here. So we will block, but we won't moderate. Remember, moderate means to convert either hydroxyl group or an amino group into something else to weaken them and make them less activating. We want to keep it activating, highly activating. That way I can add my two isopropyl groups very easily. We're starting here with the phenol. Keep it as is, no moderation, no weakening of it. I'm gonna react it and do a blocking group. SO3 and H2SO4. Remember again, the hydroxyl functional group is ortho paradiactor. When I'm doing this sulfonation procedure, it's reversible, I will do a sulfonic acid on the para position. It'll come right here, SO3H or HSO3, either way, HSO3 or SO3H. It doesn't matter how you write it. Either way is fine. So we have blocked it. Now, the next step is to bring in a Friedel Crafts alkylation step. I will react everything here with this CH3, C, CH3, and then I have a H here and a Cl. I'm reacting here with isopropyl chloride in the presence of a catalyst AlCl3. Aluminum chloride and isopropyl chloride. Because the para position is blocked and this is ortho para it has to add here and it has to add here. It has to add in both areas because we never moderated it. It's still very activating and will add in both areas. What I will end up seeing is this. OH, your benzene ring, your blocking group SO3H or HSO3 either way is representing is fine and you've added your one isopropyl group here one isopropyl group here and we're so close to being done all we have to do is remove this we have to take this and we have to remove it and how can we remove it in the presence of intense heat you can do acid and water and you'll remove this blocking group hence it's called a reversible sulfonation reversible sulfonation we will have our phenol group and our end product propofol will have been developed. I will have my isopropyl group here, my isopropyl group here, and we are done and it's completed. That right there is propofol synthesized using only a blocking group and the activating potential of hydroxyl group and not moderating it by converting it to an ether. No moderating is needed, but blocking certainly needed and you have the two isopropyl groups add to the ortho position to your hydroxyl group and you have propofol. Thank you for watching.